I'm Dr. Stephen Claypool and I'm reviewing the medical evidence for coffee. Since coffee contains caffeine, a stimulant, coffee drinking has generally not been considered to be part of a healthy lifestyle. Early studies from the 1970s suggested it may increase heart attacks. Stimulants were presumed to be unhealthy. On the other hand, coffee is a rich source of antioxidants and other bioactive compounds and may reduce biomarkers of inflammation. So which is it? Is coffee good or bad for you? This meta-analysis published in 2014 analyzed 21 studies, which included almost a million people, of which more than 120,000 died over many years. Lifestyle factors were tracked and controlled for, and people that consumed coffee were compared to non-coffee drinkers. Coffee drinkers had a reduction in all-cause mortality. That is, coffee drinkers were less likely to die than non-coffee drinkers. Drinking any amount of coffee was associated with a lower death rate, but maximum reduction in death was noted at 3 to 4 cups of coffee per day. The reduction in death was 16%. This graph shows the relative risk of death versus the amount of coffee consumed. Non-coffee drinkers have a relative risk of 1. As more coffee is consumed, the risk of death goes down, but you can see it plateaus in the range of 2 to 5 cups per day. And here is another meta-analysis that analyzes the same studies. These investigators presented the data in a forest plot. Each of the individual studies are shown vertically. The relative risk of death is plotted horizontally, and non-coffee consumption has a relative risk of 1. All studies that appear to the left of this line have a lower risk of death for coffee consumption compared to non-coffee consumption. The dots represent the average for each study. The bars represent the 95% confidence interval. That is, we're at 95% confident that potential random variation in the data would mean the result would fall within this range. Some studies have a narrow confidence interval. Others, a large confidence interval. This is because we're more confident, statistically speaking, in studies that have a larger group of participants or that are followed for a longer time. You can see from the plot that almost all the studies, except the very first ones, show a reduced risk of death in coffee consumers. The average of all studies pooled together shows a reduction in death. This study also reorganized the studies by geographic location rather than chronological order, lumping the studies from the USA together and the studies from Europe together. When analyzed this way, coffee consumption in the American groups was associated with an 8% reduced risk of death, whereas coffee consumption in Europe was associated with a 22% reduction. That's a big difference in death reduction. Why is coffee consumption in Europe associated with a bigger reduction in deaths than coffee consumption in the United States? We don't know the answer. It might be because the populations studied are different in Europe than in the U.S. Or it might be that in Europe there are other lifestyle factors that we don't understand, so we didn't control for them appropriately. But I suspect it might be that the coffee they drink in Europe is different than in the U.S. In Europe, they drank a lot more instant coffee, and over the last 30 years when this data was collected, they drank a lot more espresso coffee drinks, whereas Americans have primarily consumed drip coffee. The method used to brew coffee impacts the amount of phytochemicals. According to these studies, instant coffee has the most phenols and the most antioxidants, then espresso, and then coffee. As of now, more study is needed to determine if instant coffee and espresso are more healthful than brewed coffee. For now, I wouldn't change your coffee drinking pattern based on this information, especially because instant coffee tastes gross. Black. Does it make sense that coffee consumption is healthful, that it reduces deaths? Coffee has a lot of phytochemicals that interact with the body that we don't fully understand. In fact, coffee is the number one source of polyphenol antioxidants in the American diet. These phytochemicals probably do good stuff in the body. I'm not going to get into the basic science. Instead, let's look at results. This large meta-analysis showed that coffee consumption is associated with reduction of coronary heart disease. And another sub-analysis showed a reduction in heart failure. Another meta-analysis showed that coffee is associated with a reduced risk of cancer. Lots of different types of cancer. We know from basic science studies that coffee reduces insulin resistance. These two meta-analyses showed a reduction in development of diabetes. Each cup of coffee consumed daily relates to a reduction in risk of about 6 to 7 percent. Stroke, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's disease all occur less frequently in coffee drinkers. In these trials, as I've stated in previous videos, the researchers control for many other risk factors by comparing like participants. Given the associations with coffee and many other important diseases, the reduction in all-cause mortality with coffee consumption is likely real. 
So let's place coffee on our healthful scale of foods. Using international data, coffee would be placed here. But since I presume most of my audience is American, we should use analysis from the American studies since our dietary consumption of coffee most closely matches those studies. In which case, coffee's relative risk of death puts it here. And I'll center it because I have mild OCD. Not so fast. What about negative effects from coffee? For some individuals, caffeine may contribute to insomnia, anxiety, and panic, which may mean coffee is not a healthful choice for these people. If you have caffeine sensitivity, you know it, so I'm more interested in discussing a negative impact of coffee that most people don't know, osteoporosis. Caffeine causes loss of calcium in the urine. Scientists have been concerned that losing calcium in the urine may impact bone density over time, increasing the risk of weakened bones, known as osteoporosis and increasing fractures, especially in elderly. This meta-analysis of 10 studies suggests that coffee increases the risk of fracture. Each cup of coffee consumed daily is associated with an increase in risk of about 3.5%. So at four cups of coffee daily, the long-term risk of fracture will be about 15% higher than non-coffee drinkers. More study is needed in this area, but people at high risk of developing osteoporosis may consider coffee to be an unhealthful choice because of this potentially negative factor. <laughs> Therefore, coffee is the first food item I've covered that could be considered healthful for most, but harmful for some. So I'll denote that by colorizing part of the icon with a red color. If caffeine causes calcium loss and osteoporosis, is decaf coffee better? There aren't as many studies on decaf coffee because most of the cohort trials have not tracked consumption of caffeine. But decaf seems to have the same phytochemicals, except for caffeine. And of the studies that have tracked decaf consumption, the outcomes for mortality, heart disease, and risk of diabetes have been the same. To the best of our knowledge, decaf coffee has the same benefits as regular coffee, minus the risk of fracture. Whipsha! So decaf coffee falls here. By the way, you've probably heard that decaf coffee actually contains some caffeine, which is true, but it's a fraction of the amount found in regular coffee. According to this study, decaffeinated beverages contain between 0 and 15 milligrams of caffeine per beverage from a variety of coffee vendors. That's modest compared to an average of 188 milligrams for a same-sized regular coffee beverage. Soft drinks average 18 to 48 milligrams for a smaller size. So decaf coffee has caffeine, but it's a modest amount. What about adding sugar, milk, or cream to coffee? Is it still healthful? We don't have enough data to fully answer that question, but in the studies I reviewed, the diets just tracked coffee consumption. They did not differentiate between those that drank black coffee versus coffee with additives. So the mortality benefits I reviewed before included people that drink coffee with sugar and cream added. And despite the fact that many people don't drink their coffee black, there is an overall positive association with coffee consumption. So although it seems logical that adding sugar to your coffee is not a good idea, the best answer we have today is is that we cannot say that the combination of coffee plus sugar is not healthful. So if you enjoy your coffee with cream and sugar, continue onward. I don't recommend that you start drinking coffee for health reasons. I believe most people only have capacity to change one or two things in their diet based on health. And if you're going to make a change, I suggest you start by eating more nuts or more fruits and vegetables. But if you enjoy drinking coffee, then don't worry about it. It appears to be healthful. Uh, and also, don't worry about how much you drink. Just go for it. Coffee consumption is associated with a reduction in all-cause mortality, heart disease, and diabetes.